Hello again friends and thanks for joining us today. This channel is always on the lookout for cool cars with intriguing stories and our featured 1972 Dodge Monaco station wagon is no exception. When we first met owner David Hendrickson at a big Mopar show last year, he began to tell us how long he's had it, what he's done to it, and how it was his family's main transportation for years. We immediately knew that you guys would like to see it and hear all about it. This long roof is both show and go. Be sure to leave a comment on what you think of this monocle, built in an era where station wagons ruled the road. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. We're sure you won't see another car just like it anywhere else except on this channel. Now, let's go for a ride. Hi, I'm David Henriksen. Um, I bought this yellow 72 Monaco wagon in uh, July of 77. I saw them when they were brand new. I worked at the dealer and really liked the way that Monaco wagon looked. And my wife and I just had our second of three children and we were driving my 60 Imperial LeBaron and I told my wife, this isn't the kind of car to raise a family in. We need a station wagon. And then expressed my interest in the 72 Monaco and uh, took a couple of months and I saw one and bought it. It just happens to be a first day production uh, August 9th of 71, right after the pilot cars were made, equipped with every option they had. I don't know what the window sticker said, but I know it was at least $7,500. That was the most expensive Dodge you could buy in any model in 72. Had the, uh, the cassette player down on the transmission hump that you could actually record tapes in had a mic, um, dual air conditioning, and uh, cruise, windows, uh, tailgate window, um, six-way power seat, the 50-50 seat, and the 440 engine. And it served us well for many years, and uh, I finally decided to restore it in 1990. And it took three years. As soon as I got it all back together, went and had an emission tested, hooked it up to the trailer. We had 13 miles on it, and we left town to go camping. And uh, a couple years later, my wife and I started traveling in it. And we traveled all over the country, went back east uh, a few times. And it's been in 40 states and up in Canada. And it has dual air conditioning, so it, it keeps it very comfortable in there. Put a nice a stereo in it with a 6CD changer, and we could uh, just pop the cartridge of 6CDs out, put another one in, to just enjoy our own music. And my wife enjoyed shopping and filling the back of the wagon with, with stuff. We still had places to go. We went to uh, the Chrysler Museum in... Uh, Michigan, and we've been through the big trees in California. Drove through the trees too, tight fit. I replaced the wood grain on the side. Uh, there was scalloping, a light dark scalloping in the wood grain, so I copied that and did two tones with clear pearl over it to get that effect on the side. And then, uh, 03, I went to uh, uh, Vegas uh, Mopars at the Strip which did a photo shoot in Mopar Muscle in 03.
Okay, the car came with the 440, and I still have the original numbers matching engine block in it. But that's the only part that's original. The uh, I got stage four heads, which they made in the late 70s. They're iron heads. And uh, I got a crane roller hydraulic cam, um, Eagle crank, stroker 415 crank. So it's, uh, it's 40 over and it's a 493 cubic inch. Uh, the exhaust is TTI all the way back, headers and three inch, three inch pipes. And uh, I got the torque flight transmission and behind that I get a gear vendor overdrive uh, 373 gears in the eight and three quarter rear end, and in overdrive it's a 2.9 ratio, and that is enough to uh, propel it to 150 miles an hour with four passengers and luggage and the dual air conditioning running. Things go by you really fast at 150, <laughs> and I've done it many times, and it's kind of fun walking away from. BMWs and stuff, <laughs> but you only have to have a big stretch of open highway to do that. And uh, there's a guy who was duplicating the all of the factory scoops, which were on fiberglass hoods, duplicating those in steel. And uh, I called him and said, can you make a scoop that never existed? And he says, if you can communicate to me what you want, we can make it. So I mocked up the front three inches of the scoop with the fiberglass from the uh, the nose cone of the wagon. I cut out of it, car at a junkyard. And then I drew up the rest of it. Then I took a junk hood and cut it about six inches out from the scoop. I took that, the mock-up, pencil lines on that hood, and the drawings, and drove it up from Phoenix, I drove it to Salt Lake to give it to the guy. And so it's a one piece steel hood scoop and it came out just the way I wanted it. Matches the lines of the car, it's not too big, but it's big enough to be effective. Now the bottom of the hood, I shaped that myself. That's actually the skin of the hood sliced up and bent down to go just below the air cleaner to capture all that cold air. The car was originally um, parchment, which is a light beige. It's also called Sierra, Sierra beige uh, on a Plymouth. And it was basically the color of dirt. And uh, that was boring. And I always liked the um, Sunfire Yellow. So I ended up going with the Sunfire Yellow when I did the restoration and the paint. So I bought these um, 17 by 8 torque, American Torque Thrust 2s. Uh, the tire size is limited because I also have the spare tire matches. And the spare tire well, it, it's a snug fit. All the camping we did, uh, once we get out in the forest, then we'd go after set up camp and be there for all that time. We would drive around in the forest on forest roads and stuff and with the kids. We had the kids sitting on the roof of the car. And uh, once we'd drive around, I'd have to drive back into town to get gas because it didn't get good mileage. Uh, so I was tired of always having to go back to town to get gas. So when I did the restoration, I cut the floor out underneath the back seat and uh, with sheet metal, boxed that in, so it gave me a big space under the car. Then I uh, mocked up a gas tank out of cardboard, took it to a guy who builds aluminum tanks. He made an aluminum tank to match my mock-up, and it slipped snugly in between the unibody frame rails. And I used a 72 Chrysler parts car. I got all of the, the strap and mounting hardware off of the 72 sedan and used that to hold that tank up in there. And I also had to make a filler neck. 
and uh, the the ga- the gas door came off of another parts car, so it all looks like original, and that the additional tank is 33 gallons, and my original is 23, so that gives me 56 gallons of gas. Uh, yeah, we've been everywhere in that car. What do you guys think of David's awesome Mopar wagon? We think it's one of the best wagons we've ever seen. It's so well planned and the modifications made and so well put together too. What a great touring car this would be, right? You definitely get the looks and the thumbs up wherever you go in this one-of-a-kind long roof. So join us next week as we bring you another one-of-a-kind auto. You won't want to miss it. So see you next week and remember, please be careful out there.